So next up, we want to look at normal vectors. Um, now, if you're, if you're looking at a normal vector um, in the plane, things aren't so bad. I mean, if you think about a, here's maybe a curve, right? So given by some vector valued function. And so you can imagine that we have, you know, we have, say, R of t, right? And then we have our our prime of t. We can normalize if we want to get the uh, to get the unit tangent vector as we've been discussing. And then, well, okay, there's kind of two choices for normal vector, right? But we could kind of go that way. We could go down. The main thing is those should be orthogonal, right? The normal vector should be orthogonal to the tangent vector. Okay. And that's fine. I mean, okay, there's kind of that choice. You can try to maybe think, make some like right-hand rule consideration if you want, um, but it's fine. We're, we've got it up to a scalar multiple. Okay, but the situation gets much more complicated if we're looking at a curve in space, right? So now, if I have a curve that's in space somewhere, and I've got some point on my curve, so I've got my r of t, okay? And I've got my tangent to the curve at that point, or it's our prime, well, the issue now is that there is an entire plane of normal vectors, right? So there's this whole plane, you know, you can think of the curve passing through this plane at kind of right angles, and now there's all these normal vectors to choose from. And how do you, how do you make some sort of canonical choice there, right? There, there are infinitely many choices for that normal vector. Um, and so what we do is we say, okay, well, let's, First of all, let's work with the unit tangent vector, right? So, um, so we're going to take the unit tangent vector. So remember that this is one over the magnitude of r prime times r, oops, r prime of t, right? Um, and and now the main thing here is is note that. Well, the magnitude, you know, by essentially by definition, the magnitude is one. Uh, well, that means that you know this vector dotted with itself is one. Now, if you take the derivative of both sides of this equation using the the product rule for derivatives, right? You're going to get uh, t prime of t dotted with t plus t dotted with t prime. And of course, on the other side, you get 0 because it's a constant. Um, but dot product is symmetric, right? So this is just 2 times t prime dotted with t, and that should be equal to 0. And so that means that these two vectors here, right, um, the unit tangent vector and its derivative, these are orthogonal. Right? Those two vectors are orthogonal. Um, maybe we were worried that one of the ways they could end up being orthogonal is that, uh, that t prime is actually 0. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, can, I can think of some scenarios where that, where that might result. Um, one that immediately comes to mind is if, if r prime was already just a constant unit vector, right, then, then t is going to be a constant, you know, so if we're on a straight line, right, a straight line will have a constant direction vector. You can normalize that, get a unit vector will still be constant. Um, then that derivative will be zero, and then there's some uh, ambiguity here. Um, so... This is, this is something that I guess we need to think about in the context of, of 
curves and not necessarily just lines, right? So for a line, um, yeah, it's, we're still kind of maybe um, stuck, but as long as, as long as this um, T prime is non-zero, right? So as long as this T prime is not equal to zero, we can define this unit normal vector n of t to be 1 over the magnitude of t prime times t prime, right? Um, and notice that this, this is somehow related to like second derivative of the original vector valued function, right? Because t t comes from r prime, t is parallel to r prime, and now we're taking the derivative of that. And so we are, you know, now the, the fact that we have this um, scale factor in front, which is also variable, is going to skew things a little bit, but we have something here which is, in some sense, related to the second derivative of the function r of t that we began with.